All we need is like a few big news and then we will see the rockets. This is an adoption wave that not a lot of people have on their radar. There is no second best uh, to Bitcoin. There's only 21 million Bitcoins ever. We are now at 95%. In, in 10 years, it's going to be 99%. And the last 1% will take over 100 years to mark. Bitcoin doesn't have a CEO. Bitcoin doesn't have any employees. That's why we have to be vocal about it. Once you have Bitcoin as your unit of account and you are like store of value you look at investments differently it's a fascinating time to be alive and to be a bitcoiner don't don't take the profits bitcoin is the profit and bitcoin is the exit you don't you don't trade your bitcoin to fear hi peter how are you doing everything fine hi robin Every, everything fine in uh, in zurich um so I think it's raining today here, so I won't I won't be needing these these uh, Bitcoin shades. But uh, I'll just <laughs> go <cool> down. <laughs> De but, definitely. Uh, but so first, I would like to con congratulate you, Robin, on something because I I understood that you you locked Michael Saylor to your to your podcast as a guest. So I think it's pretty pretty amazing thing, and uh, and also it's it's quite an honor to be in the same podcast with the father of Bitcoin uh, corporate adoption. So. And uh, that's a that's a pretty cool topic, actually. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating for me that he just said yes to do it. I'm like I'm just a random small Bitcoin podcaster, and I was just shooting my shot and said like, "Hey, Michael Saylor, I would love to to have you on the podcast." And he's like, "Yeah, definitely, let's do it." And we're even doing it um, um, in person in Prague, uh, so oh. it will be an in person podcast uh, with him, oh, and oh, oh. Uh, will be also my first ever in-person podcast that I ever did and then uh, directly with like one of the, the best people in, in, in Bitcoin, the biggest people in Bitcoin. Uh, but your, your background is also in, in, in companies and you adopted also for your, for your company the, the, the MicroStrategy playbook. So uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, story. yeah. Yeah, I'll start with, uh, with the MicroStrategy story because I have, I have a professional link with the MicroStrategy uh, since 2008, actually, so it's it's a funny funny um, funny link uh, to Sailor and MicroStrategy because we all know that Michael Sailor he he founded uh, MicroStrategy and I was actually in, in in BI consulting back then in my um, my home country Finland and I was sent to a, a MicroStrategy certification training to London. So I became a MicroStrategy certified engineer in 2008, like one month before the white paper, Bitcoin white paper was published. So it's, it's a really, it's a really funny link to, to MicroStrategy and, and Bitcoin there from, from my professional background. And yes, definitely. So this, this uh, MicroStrategy playbook, uh, Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. It's, I, I think it's, it's clever. It's extremely clever um, idea. And for my own company here in Switzerland, we are now in the process of, of introducing that same, same strategy also uh, in, in cooperation with Relay. So that's definitely, I mean, if a startup or, or an SME can do it, then any company can do it, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> it's not rocket science. Yeah, for, for me, it's the whole whole story with uh, SMEs and 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 even bigger companies like we have Apple, Google, and all those those big uh, companies. Like this is a adoption wave that not a lot of people have on their radar because MicroStrategy did it. Uh, a few other companies are doing it. Publicly traded companies are doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you look at the S and P five hundred. There's mm -hmm. like one company that has kind of some Bitcoins. That's Tesla. Mm -hmm. And no one else has it. I mean, maybe MicroStrategy comes soon in the S&P 500. Then there's like a, a really a big player in there. But there's so much potential of uh, cash that will flood into Bitcoin once we, <laughs> once more and more get into this. And like at a certain point when like, I don't know, uh, 10 companies or 50 companies of the S&P 500 do it, then all of them will talk about it. All of them have to answer mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. investors call like, oh, why did you not have a, a mm -hmm. Bitcoin strategy? So like, for me, that's a really big uh, adoption wave that, uh, that, that could come. But yeah, let's, let's talk about like, why should 
should someone adopt the, the micro strategy playbook and the playbook that you are also doing? Like, wh what's the reason for a company to to do that? Actually, I mean, f as a reserve asset, there is no there is no second best uh, to Bitcoin. That's pretty clear because if you look at long term, there is no better store of value than Bitcoin. So it's 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 not really like I said, it's not rocket science. If you look if you look long term, if you hold if you hodl for years minimum. You can't lose. So, therefore, I mean, it's like for any any retail investor or a private individual having Bitcoin, it's the same story. I mean, it's it's the best store of value and and hedge um, against inflation. So, yeah, it, and, and I it's, mean, it's, uh, yeah, and, and it's that answer to uh, that horrible uh, traditional financial system that we, that you have, but you, you spent, uh, I think in the bio, I saw it that you have spent like 10 plus years in the traditional financial system. So you're probably one of the, the best guests to ask, like, w what's wrong with that? <laughs> like you have a pretty good understanding of, of the traditional financial markets and, and what the, uh, the, what the system is doing. Um, Like what did you do there, and 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 what did you saw that is going wrong with the traditional financial markets? So my my professional background is I was I was um, always a more or less a data and IT guy twenty plus years now. So I have been building and running uh, global data platforms in in various industries um, such as um, big pharma, telecommunications, commodities trading, electrical engineering, and financial services. So. And there, there, there have been also in, in financial services uh, spearheading like you know large IT programs, digital transformation initiatives, um, for many years, and and basically I just couldn't take the corporate politics anymore, and I, I became independent and started my own company. So, but but uh, speaking of financial services and the problems that we have there, it's pretty clear like the central bank run run system where we create money also money out of thin air. And we sell our value like precious time against that money that is not even even scarce. It's just being it's it's being printed out of thin air, and there's nothing behind. So that's pretty much in the nutshell what's wrong with the whole financial system. And Bitcoin is the perfect uh, hedge against that inflation that is being uh, caused by this money printing. And you also in in Swiss, which is a. I feel like a unique perspective because as we talked before, like uh, the Swiss has with the Swiss franc, the, mm -hmm. the, the best shit coin in the world. Uh, and it was yeah. also the, the country that was last of the gold standard. So mm -hmm. Swiss might be that, that small window that we have right now, how Bitcoin, how a Bitcoin standard could actually look like. Of course, Swiss is not on a Bitcoin standard. They, they also have not the gold standard. Yeah, uh, but uh, I feel like Swiss has a this different vibe to it. It's it's something. It's a, let, let's talk about like how is how is the Swiss different now to the to the rest of the world, and how could this lead to like why Bitcoin is such a good uh, sound money system for us? From a regulatory perspective, if you if you think of Switzerland, it's extremely Bitcoin friendly. And, um, You know, we, we talk about shit coins a lot and we have Ethereum and uh, we have Cardano and all those and uh, the Crypto Valley in Zug, um, which is next to the, the traditional fiat finance center, Zurich. So it's funny that we have these two, two different worlds like next to each other here um, in, in, in Switzerland. And, and also the, the central bank, I think they have been quite uh, progressive in their, in their strategies uh, like in, in the past. With with, um, with investing in in, in various um, various instruments there, and I think there there is a big potential that Swiss uh, central bank might even uh, adopt Bitcoin at some point. Um, I think because the, the, I think the general opinion about Bitcoin in this country is extremely positive, and you have the point of sales number of point of sales in Switzerland is extremely high, also in global terms, where you can pay using Bitcoin. And even in Canton Zug, for example, you can pay your taxes with Bitcoin. If you're, I mean, if you're <laughs> stupid enough to, to pay your taxes uh, with Bitcoin, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. But you know, it's it's technically possible. 
and also in, in, in Lugano, where you have the Plan B, um, it's extremely extremely widespread. Uh, you can pay with Bitcoin almost anywhere there. So Switzerland definitely is, is a great place to be um, for a Bitcoiner. And um, there's also um, no capital gain tax here. So. So there's like if you sell Bitcoin uh, or you use it to to pay for something, you don't have to pay yeah. anything. Yeah, zero capital gain tax. Yeah, a uh, really nice. Uh, is is it the same? Uh, like when I talk to outside of my Bitcoin world to people in Austria, uh, I have a lot of fuds coming my way as uh, the, the the climate and energy consumption is is still a big thing. Uh, what people are saying, uh, we. People are also saying, no, we need inflation. Uh, a deflationary system would uh, be not good. Like there are a lot of different things that are here in the normal world. Is that still also in, in Swiss? Yeah. Do, do, do... Well, I don't know. It's in, in, in public discussion. It's of course, there's always this, this fake news around because, you know, the mainstream media, we all know how it is. I mean, the, what they tell is mostly. <laughs> Whatever, whatever they tell is, is I, I would, I would really look it through a, a different filter, you know. <laughs> so basically, the whole energy topic that, that I find it hilarious because everybody, ah, Bitcoin consumes so much energy and more and more, uh, like country X, for example, you know. And and in the end, if you think of the whole banking industry, how much it takes energy and cost to run that whole circus around fiat currencies. Plus, plus to secure that, you need the military operations on top. I mean, how much US spends on securing US dollar and, and their interest around the world with the petrodollar? You know, imagine the whole army, uh, the military spending, how much they do. I mean, they, they spend like 10 times, um, 10 times more than any other country or no, sorry. It was like they spent more than um, all of the, the, the others in top 10 combined. That's the military budget. It's insane. It, 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 it's and just to I'm secure, just to, just to secure the, the fiat currency. But a part of that probably would also like, do, do you think that those military uh, operations and uh, those border controls and that The line is uh, breaking. Line is breaking. Ma, what is breaking? The line is the breaking. Line is breaking. Yeah. The, the, uh, the internet line? Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, now it's better. But there was like you were you were fr uh, frozen. For a while. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, but could you hear me? Yes. Now, now I could hear you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no, no problem. Like sometimes it's um, a little bit swiggled, but. Uh, in the end podcast, uh, when it comes out, then uh, yeah. those will not be there because uh, Riverside up uploads the, the the best quality audio and video locally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, like uh -huh. okay. the, the, the the Zoom call quality that we have now uh, is just now while speaking, mm -hmm. and afterwards uh, uh, the the best quality audio and video gets uh, uploaded. That's what you also see with the uploading sign. Uh, and and this is like then combined to it, uh, to it. But I I, I see you all the time. Really okay. Uh, good. So it, it should be fine. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So you, usually the the end product is extremely clean uh, and has no wiggle room. And even if there's like I have afterwards like a, a small tool that runs mm -hmm. over the uh, the pauses. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when there's a, like a long pause in there, it, yeah. it it sees that and just cuts that out uh, automatically, and so the the whole process is uh, great cool. I, I I like it a lot. It makes it makes podcasting way yeah. easier than it used to be. Otherwise, you have to listen to it and see like what's going on and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and do it and, and edit yes. it. But yeah. Perfect. Then, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's 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 continue with with Bitcoin. One thing that I um, I wanted to ask you: What do you think is the the main misconception that people have? Like, what? Because we understand Bitcoin, and we are here, and we think that Bitcoin will be fully adopted at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. But it's 
but we have to get over some hurdles. Like it's all education in, in, in my opinion. What do you think is like the main misconception, the main hurdle that people have to go through to understand yeah. Bitcoin, to, to get to this full Bitcoin standard? And how can we improve also our messaging around that? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'll, I'll tell about my own own story. So how did I how did I get into the Bitcoin? What is my my rabbit hole story? And I think that also answers the question from from my perspective. So I first first heard about uh, a Bitcoin from a friend. I think 2014, 15, something like that. And and um, I mean it sounded good. Of course, I didn't get it immediately. And I also opened an account on I think Kraken back then, but I didn't buy. <laughs> I didn't buy Bitcoin, but I opened an account already back then. But but then um, more and more friends started talking about it, um, and and then in 2016 I I, I bought my first first uh, first stake, and but still the thing is I I didn't understand what I was doing. I didn't fully understand Bitcoin because I mean when you start you you rarely. Many of many of us didn't probably understand fully Bitcoin <laughs> when you first bought it, and and it's it's a journey. It takes it takes a lot of time to to actually grasp what's 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 the whole value behind it, and that happened also to me. And and of course, Bitcoin it, it gained a lot of value between 2016 and and 2020 and 21, and and I did all the mistakes you can do actually. So I was I was even selling Bitcoin to buy shitcoin. Yes, I, the biggest mistake of my life. I was selling. I was taking the profit out, right, to to buy Ethereum and and uh, Shiba Inu or Solana, whatever shitcoin. You know, that's like so stupid. And and trying to you know also beat the market and do like day trading and uh, that all, all the possible mistakes you can you can do as a as as a Bitcoiner. I did, but then um, I, I started to really, really understand the the, the real value, the scarcity in in uh, like four four years ago, and ever since I've been only buying and, and hodling, and and not not selling one 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 single satoshi, and <laughs> that was actually also for me the the whole idea behind it, the COVID time, the whole circus, it opened my eyes. And, and made me understand with this money printing and, and uh, inflation that was I was then then caused by it that Bitcoin really is the only only way to store the value in in the long run and and that was for me the eye opener as well and that I think that is also that the people need to understand that there's only 21 million bitcoins ever. We are now at 95%. In, in 10 years, it's going to be 99%. And the last 1% will take over 100 years to mine. So it's just, once you understand that, it's already a good start. And, and it, it won't be, there won't be any more Bitcoin created out of thin air, like you can print these, uh, these um, fiat currencies and, and sheet coins as well. Like um, Ethereum, for example, it, it became now a, um, a commodity, according to SEC, and it's it's got nothing to do with commodity. I mean, it's a it's a shit coin that you just print out of thin air. It's like crypt these these cryptos. They are like fiat currencies in a dig digital format without government backing. So it's like CBDCs without government. But but you know, this this I I don't get it. I mean. Uh, why 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 would anybody buy ethereum i did i did earlier but now i'm i'm smart enough to to say that i i wouldn't do it again what, so. what made you understand uh, that altcoins are no alternative to bitcoin and they are just shit coins like what, yeah. what was the mind switch that you had to make like that it's bitcoin only and not the other uh, cryptics because a lot of people still did not make it and a lot of people mm -hmm. still like oh i just buy the 10 top 10 coins or something like that yeah, yeah. well the scarcity right you, you you understand that with bitcoin just can't create it more it's the 21 million gap and that's it 
um, and, and also what, what was for me, it was also a big, um, big red, red flag with Ethereum when they changed the, the, you know, the algorithm to, to proof of stake. And, and the whole thing, I mean, they have uh, the founding team, they have, they have the, I mean, it's a foundation, but, but st they still have the whole, it's so it's a centralized currency, like any, any fiat and, and um, with, with the proof of stake algorithm, it's a scam, basically. That's my opinion. Yeah. And, and it's so obvious because proof of stake means you have, uh, people that stake have a say in what's going to happen with Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And then when we come to, for example, stocks, you have investors and you have stakeholders, uh, who, when they have, uh, stocks in the, uh, in company, they can have a say in what's happening. So for me, altcoins are the same concept as they are with stocks because they are just, uh, uh, um, uh, an, an in initial, like there are just people who have a stake in it. There's also pre mine. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing yes, as, yes. as a, as an issuance in a, in a company in the stocks. Yeah. So the, I don't know what's different about it. M maybe, uh, oh, uh, cryptos no. are the new way of starting companies. I don't think so. Oh. Uh, but, but that's the only, only reason I can think of that uh, there might be some use case other than that. It's like, oh. wh wh why would you? Do that, uh, and 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 I don't know if uh, the SSC long term really wants that. That there are crypto companies that are issuing money without uh, registering with the security exchange it can, because they can just do it, uh, and mm -hmm. you don't have to go through the hurdle mm -hmm. that you have mm -hmm. to go through when you go public. So it will be in really interesting to see and. I think there will be at some point like a complete crackdown on mm -hmm. almost all shit coins. Probably not all, but almost all will be gone from the regulatory perspective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and if if the regulatory don't don't do anything against it, uh, the free market will do it uh, for them. <laughs> Correct. And and if you think of um, what what will happen next, um, because this opens the Pandora's box for all the shit coins, Ethereum getting the status, I think that's a, that's a big risk because then then well, I mean why why wouldn't any like a dog coin or whatever cat coin or a hamster coin, why wouldn't they get the, the same treatment as as Ethereum from SEC? <laughs> So we'll be we'll be flooded with all these spot ETFs of of various uh, meme coins, and I I don't see it as a as a good uh, good development. And I'm I'm, I'm feel I'm feel sorry for the people who who uh, invest in their money in that uh, in that crap. Yeah, and it's 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 uh, it, it, it's it's usually just sad to see. I mean, there are some that where I'm like, oh yeah, he has a lot of money. He, he just does not think, he, he just like, oh, there's a crypto asset. I will buy 10% mm -hmm. with my net worth in just whole crypto. I don't feel mm -hmm. sorry for them, but there are a lot of people that listen to the crap mm -hmm. and they are not in a good financial uh, position. And all of a the sudden they mm -hmm. get dragged into that. And I'm like, because of some scammer, he will lose half of his, um, uh, his, well, uh, his, 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 his life his life savings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why like I'm on the one side, I'm like, I don't care about al shit coins, about altcoins, what, what they are doing. I could just not mention them because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if, if someone wants to invest in that, it's their, their fault. Like I yeah. don't care yeah. for them. The free market will take care of it. Yes. But if the other side, there are people that are suffering because of that. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, those are usually afterwards really big Bitcoiners. <laughs> we, I heard a lot of stories about mm -hmm. that, but yeah, it's 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 important to 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 speak up uh, and uh, against that. Uh, one question uh, around the topic uh, before we move on: Do you have a theory why so many altcoins are still around? Why there's a good amount of 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 money still in in, in those altcoins in those shit coins? Uh, and why people still to this day, like, I don't know when was the first shitcoin, uh, around, uh, the last 12 yeah. years, people still fall for, for, yeah. for this. Well, it's, it's clearly lack of understanding and also the, 
the funny thing is that uh, people, that, but Bitcoin is so expensive. It's like oh, it's almost seventy thousand dollars per per coin, and and yeah, but Ethereum, it's only you know three thousand something. It's much cheaper. I can I can buy a stake. You know, I can get the whole coin. It just they don't understand. That's the problem. There's lack of understanding still, and that's why we have to. That's why we have to um, communicate this, and because Bitcoin doesn't have a marketing department, Bitcoin doesn't have a CEO, Bitcoin doesn't have any employees. You know, that's why we have to be vocal about it, and that's why I also—I mean, I've been in Bitcoin since eight years, but I was never vocal about this, uh, like publicly. I've been orange pilling my friends and, and family; they hate me for it, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I started to be vocal because I, I thought like every voice counts. We need to we need to spread the word. We need to tell the people that this is the the solution to to the um, inflation. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, thank you, by the way, for for taking your time and 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 for for being on the show and, and not hiding. Uh, I mean, I have full respect for anyone that wants to stay anonymous. And I have several podcasts on my show where the guest uh, decided to be completely anonymous, uh, like Wicked or other even quite popular Twitter accounts that but just never show their face. Um, but I think if you can, if if you can handle it from a security perspective, and you are okay with that little bit of additional risk or maybe a little bit more of additional risk uh with being public and being known and being with the face and and and, and name out there you should definitely do that because people pe people do what other people do and when they see a lot mm -hmm. of faces associated with that bitcoin thing it's mm -hmm. better than just random accounts where they don't really know who's who's yeah. behind that and and what is, is their face to it. Like people want to grasp content with real other human beings. Mm -hmm. That's how we mm -hmm. are uh, wired, and that's why it's so important to as Bitcoiners not to hide. Even though I respect any, anybody who, who does that, uh, um, but that's just my my thing. Why I decided to to go out. Do, do you have a special reason why you? decided not to hide and then come out strong and loud inflation and and the, the whole the, the whole establishment that we have uh, governing us i've just kind of you know lost my faith in it <laughs> that's why that's why i just couldn't couldn't uh, be quiet anymore the pain the pain grew too big uh, so absolutely. i had to open my mouth you know and and I'm, i mean I, I, i'm not afraid so i'm a big boy so Anybody can try to, you know, whatever, but. Uh. <laughs> If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So That's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in the whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think the. I mean, every situation from every person is different, but there are already so many vocal Bitcoiners out there that it's not, 
it's proven that it's possible to be not attacked constantly <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and not have like yeah, uh, yeah. there are so many bitcoin podcasts out there there are really big vocal uh public speakers that have mm -hmm. uh, tens of thousands of hundred thousand even in, in the millions of, of followers and we don't see articles like oh he got attacked he got stabbed he <laughs> like mm -hmm. he is bitcoin so it seems that it's um it it seems that it's a big enough uh um pool of people that it's actually quite safe mm -hmm. uh, I, i don't know how, what the future brings but i just i just felt like better be brave uh than than just come out and and be hiding behind something i like i want yeah. to tell my my kids that oh i was standing for that revolution and i, I was mm -hmm. Uh, doing that uh, for for the better of humanity. I, at least I think so that I'm doing uh -huh. it. <laughs> to yes, really teach us absolutely. And and you know, good that you mentioned kids because I have two, and um, you know, the orange peeling it starts from home, <laughs> and so so um, <clears throat> both of them actually they are still young enough to get the child allowance, and. What we do is is they they invest uh, their child allowance uh, directly to Bitcoin every month. So they have their own wallets and uh, have it transferred uh, via relay to to their own uh, to their own wallets. Do do they have hundred uh, percent Bitcoin allowance, or, or do they also get some fiat stack? <laughs> I have a wife, you know, so wife uh, decided that they need also some fiat stack. So the, the half of it goes to ETFs. So. But I, I would be I would be hundred percent for for Bitcoin. You know? <laughs> But she has yeah. 50, she has fifty percent vote, so proof of stake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> marriage is proof of stake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but but you you can buy maybe a Bitcoin ETF with it. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. That uh, I think that uh, might be the next next step. Yeah, and, and and even even ETFs at some point will have a lot of Bitcoin in that. When the the companies in the ETFs buy Bitcoin, then even those like you you will probably have not uh, an, an an thing. It's also interesting for me is that the hurdle rate of of Bitcoin. Once you have Bitcoin as your unit of account and your like store of value, you look at investments differently. All of a sudden, you're like. Do, do I really invest in that? Do I really do that? Did, did, did since, since you adopted a Bitcoin standard, something change in your professional and personal life when it comes to investing and time? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I do, I do the DCA like everybody in Bitcoin should do, um, weekly automated uh, purchase, uh, again, via relay. Which is a great Swiss company. I, I really like their app and, and everything. So, and, and if you have, you, it's your keys. So they don't hold your keys. It's your keys, your coins. And, and basically every dip, when there's a, when there's a bigger dip, I'm, I'm buying also. So it's, um, the DCA plus the, the red candles. Those are the best candles. So, you know, you just, uh, stack more when it, when it goes, goes red. And then you have these these uh, nice candlelight dinners when it gets green as as well. So you know, <laughs> I I really really um, really like those, both colors actually. It depends, you know. Just buy when it's red, and then you just have a have a dinner when it's green. Yeah, I, I talked with uh, some some CEOs of of Bitcoin uh, exchanges, and they always say when the price is flat. Not a lot of things are happening, but when the price is going up or down, people are buying like crazy. It doesn't matter if the price is actually going up or down. People like buy crazy mm -hmm. on, 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 mm -hmm. on the movements. Uh, yes. and, and the, the flat things, there's like where the, only the, like the DCA crowd is in there that just like has a DCA mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. month. It just goes in, but there are a lot of people that are actually buying with emotions and and buying mm -hmm. when it goes down and buying when it goes up because then the the oh. formal is starting in and oh, oh yeah. i want to catch the the dip oh mm -hmm. i want to catch the the uprise and a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of emotional things uh involved yes, that. Yes. 
Yes, I'm, I'm actually I'm looking forward to the next FOMO because uh, uh, my prediction was after this uh, spot ETF approval in, in January that we will we will see a hundred thousand Bitcoin before June. That was my prediction uh, back then, but obviously, you know, the institutions, it takes time with the due diligence and, and, and all the approvals and uh, committees and, you know, all that stuff in those corporations. Obviously, it takes, takes longer than that because now we have the retail investors of the maturity that have been buying the ETF. We know that. So that's, uh, that's still driven by the retail. But when, when, when we have that big wave of, of like institutional money really coming coming in, and when we start to have the the, the, the huge huge candles, God candles uh, daily, daily, you know the, the best days for those candlelight dinners. Um, I think then then the FOMO comes in, and uh, that will be that will be insane. What what we're gonna witness? I think even this year we, it, it will happen. So at some point we will see crazy crazy developments on on the Bitcoin front. So you're saying that uh, ETF that we did not see the full power of the ETF yet and that the most no. is still to come. Most is still to come. I think this is just uh, driven by retail, mostly. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's fascinating for me to see when we have Bitcoin and, and the price right now because this year we hit the, the all-time high before the halving, which never happened before. Yes. Uh, but it seems so calm, like, like, like there's a little bit of Bitcoin talk in the elections, uh, in the U.S. elections, nothing in the European Union elections, nothing in the Austrian election right now. They, they don't talk about Bitcoin at all, not, not, nothing about crypto or anything. In America, they are a little further ahead. They talk about Bitcoin in the election, but there's nothing crazy going on. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a really calm time. Like we are around the all time high, not quite there, but it's really calm. And it's, it's a cool time right now to build something in Bitcoin because it's not a bear market, but still it's, uh, it's a high, uh, like we are close to the all time high, but it's, there's nothing going on. The Google trends are down. Everything is kind of slow and, and, and mm -hmm. calm. Uh, not too many craziness, uh, are, are mm -hmm. happening. And I feel like we could hit in the second half of the year uh, an absolute formal half year where we're like yes. Uh, yes. institutional is coming in, this is happening, yes. small yes. businesses and all of a sudden those things that we are building the last few months and half year or year, mm -hmm. all of a sudden coming and, and really are strong yes. uh, with that. Uh, is it also like you see it? Fully agree because it doesn't matter how much uh, we communicate, uh, you know, we, we Bitcoin plebs, uh, whatever memes we post, it doesn't matter until the FOMO kicks in. And that is the best marketing tool for, for Bitcoin, the price. Once we have, I mean, all we need is like a few big news and then we will see the rockets launching. Do you, do, do you think that... Uh... The 100k Bitcoin price will be the, the major catalyst for for the general population to, to wake up and see like, oh, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, I think that's that's something that mainstream media also can't uh, be completely quiet about. I think that's yes. that's going to be a massive catalyst, hundred thousand uh, dollar Bitcoin. But I think <laughs> the, and the crazy thing to understand still here, even with hundred thousand per Bitcoin, we're still so early. It's insane how early we still are. And, and if you divide the, um, let's say, the number of dollar millionaires in the world, you know, you know this number, right? So if you divide that, uh, how much Bitcoin there will be for each of them? I think it's 0 0.3 around. For Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin for, for, for each millionaire, for each dollar millionaire in the world. And that tells tells a lot about the scarcity of of of, uh, of Bitcoin. It's it's insane how, how how scarce thing it is, and we're still we're still in the beginning. I think the being a whole coiner will have a massive status. Like this will be like really rare yeah. uh, at some point. Uh, yes. Depends on how how far you look out. But uh, if you're a Bitcoin standard and you have a whole coin, this will be like. Uh, like having half the city or <laughs> you own mm -hmm. half the city of, of your state or something like that. Um, yep, yep. 
what, what do you think will be the status of uh, Satoshi Millionaire? Because this is a goal that most people, I, I, I assume most people who are listening to that mm -hmm. probably can reach the status of a Satoshi Millionaire or most of them will be probably already above that when you listen constantly to a Bitcoin podcast because Satoshi Millionaire, it doesn't even take 700 US dollars right now. Uh, and, and when I see where most of my people are, they are like US, uh, uh, USA, Canada, Europe, uh, and, and those countries, they are like the majority of my viewers. So they definitely can afford 700 US dollars uh, in, in, in Bitcoin. Uh, they, they cannot afford to not have this <laughs> kind of, what, what, what do you think will be the status of those early adopters who are Satoshi multimillionaires? Uh, will this be similar to uh, a millionaire right now or maybe even better? Um, being a Satoshi millionaire? Yes. Yeah. Well, that depends. Depends on the, on the scale of hyperinflation, of course. That's pretty much it. You know, how much, how much um, zeros there will be behind those uh, numbers in the, in the, in the fiat, fiat bills. That will be decisive. But it's hard to predict. But if you think of like, uh, it's clear, we have Bitcoin now. Uh, it's, it's top 10 in the world, in, in, in all the assets. We have um, less than 10 companies that are bigger than Bitcoin. We have gold and silver still there. And, and we have, we have uh, bypassed 58,000 publicly listed companies already, which is a huge, huge number. So if we think Ooh. that... If we reach the, or when we reach the value of gold, the, the market cap, um, it's, it's going to be 10x and more. And that's going to, I think that's going to happen sooner or later. It's a question of when, not if. And, and um, but then if you think of, would it go like 100x or 1000x versus what is it now? I mean, it's, 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 it's possible because if you think of all the, the wealth in the world, if, uh, if, if let's say 5% of the, the whole wealth in the world would go into Bitcoin, we would be in a, in a totally different price range than now. Hey, it's, I, th I think so, a lot about that because when you see, for example, like I was a stock investor before. Mm -hmm. And before I started with Bitcoin, I was actually planning on starting with real estate. So if I would not be in Bitcoin right now, fully 100% in there, I only own Bitcoin right now mm -hmm. uh, and, and some lights and a camera and something like that. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I only own on, on Bitcoin. Um, I would have been a stock investor, real estate, uh, maybe have some gold, maybe have some other assets. Um, and when you look at the Bitcoiners, the, the most of them have, um, only Bitcoin. Then some of them have a house that they live in also. Some of them has maybe some gold, uh, like to, to like have some gold coins. If like the whole system breaks down and we don't have internet. So like, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea to have some gold coins living around where like 1% mm -hmm. of your wealth or like 0.5% mm -hmm. of your wealth mm -hmm. is in there. Uh, maybe not a too bad of an idea, uh, even though I would not recommend it, but uh, I, it's a fair game. Um, and then real estate and all those things are kind of misused as a store of value these days. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm one of the examples who would be in those, put my financial energy in those, but I choose Bitcoin. When more and more people do this and more and, po more, and more people realize Bitcoin is the superior technology for saving, uh, mm -hmm. saving your financial energy. Yeah. Uh, because it is, uh, transferable over the whole world. You can take it over every border yeah. with 12 words in your head and all those things that we, 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 we repeated so many times on this podcast, when they all realize that, like who, who will save his money in real estate, who will save his money in, in an ETF, like Does this not delete mm -hmm. all the uh, mm -hmm. use case for an ETF? <laughs> in, in, It in, does in, because in you can, be, I mean, the companies, they can print shares, right? It's pretty and, simple. And, and 
And then there's then this is all other thing with fiat currencies. Um, mm-hmm. Do do you, do you think they can survive if if uh, if if we have Bitcoin coming out and everyone is adopting a Bitcoin standard? And and I don't f- say like the next 50 years or 10 years because I don't think it will be a fast transition. But if we look out 200 years, 500 years, can can <laughs> can fiat survive this? What is the average um, age of a fiat currency? Um, I think. Uh, It it was really uh, low. Hundred uh, years or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was low. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, every fiat currency dies in the end. So there's there's no fiat currency that uh, survives uh, forever. So I think U.S. dollar is the the longest uh, surviving fiat currency at the moment. But it's um, it, it's it's actually 27 years. I just uh, looked it up. Oh yeah. 27 years. I mean, there are it's, some different articles who say 35 years, some say 50 years, but all of them say one under 100 years. Yes. Uh, yes. So that's, that's, that's it's fascinating. Insane. It's yeah. insane how low actually it is. And, and uh, how old is Euro now? Um, 23, 22 years. 20, I think it was 2002. Um, they, they launched it and it's 22 years now. And I think the whole currency is like, uh, It's already pretty much dead, and and if you look at the USD and and the, the the national debt that they generate at the moment, you know, to speak like one one trillion in every five weeks. I mean, is it sustainable? No. <laughs> one, tr- I mean, one trillion is one thousand billion every five weeks. It's like s- insane amount of money that is being printed at the moment. So this is definitely this this whole thing is not sustainable, and I think it's it's an it's a really it's a fascinating time to be alive, and to be a Bitcoiner at this time because I think this is something that we're gonna witness, witness uh, during the next five years. Yeah, and I five think to ten years, it's gonna be massive. And I think people don't understand how much a trillion actually is. Like, exactly. People yeah. think like it's from a million to a billion, it's one step, and from a billion to a trillion, it's one step. Uh, but there's this example like one million seconds versus mm-hmm. one billion seconds. I don't mm-hmm. know the exact numbers, or, but it's like something like uh, one million seconds. Uh, it, it's like a, a few days, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, one billion seconds are a few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the difference is just so gigantic yes. between a million and a billion like mm-hmm. being a millionaire you, you can quite easily achieve if you're hardworking and you put a mm-hmm. lot of time there being yeah. a millionaire that's mm-hmm. a whole different level and that we're talking the... about trillions <laughs> yes yeah 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 i mean the politicians i think they don't even understand the difference they don't they don't have they don't have no clue What they're doing, or I don't know if they have a clue, but uh, looks like they don't have a clue. Yeah. Either they don't have a clue, or they don't want to have a clue. <laughs> let's say yeah. Like yeah, I mean, um, anyways, it's it's. I think the whole Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, and and the understanding. You know, I think John Oliver said once that Bitcoin is everything people don't know about computers, combined with everything they don't understand about money. So. <laughs> I think, that's, I think that summarizes it pretty well. Yeah, uh, I, I, unfortunately, that's very, very true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, when mm-hmm. I see the orange billing, yeah. Um, do you have a stacking? Uh, like um, a lot of people pu- put out like a, a target of like, oh, you have to get to one Bitcoin if you're now in Bitcoin or you have to get to 0.1 Bitcoin if you're in Bitcoin now. Uh, do you have like some, some stacking goal that you are uh, communicating to your friends and families or to colleagues or be like, no. okay, get to this or just like as much as you want? Uh, I mean, it depends. So I, to some people I, I say, you know, depend, depending on the wealth and everything, how much they have uh, in place. But um, from 0.1 to, to one. So I'm, I'm, if, if somebody has a bit more, I said, yeah, you know, you should get to one. Yeah. yeah. One bit if somebody has a bit stuff. less, uh, get, get at least to 0.1. That's like the minimum where you should actually get. Yeah, and 0.1 will will yeah. get you a, a long way. It's uh, 10 million yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, yes, it is. It's a lot, and and um, my personal um, stack. I mean, I had a goal. I, I achieved it, um, but uh, but the funny thing with Bitcoin, you never had have you never have enough. So you just uh, just want to stack more. Once you once you really once you really go deep into the rabbit hole and understand the real value behind it, you just you can't stop. Amazing. Um, before we come to closer to the end of the podcast, um, as you are adopting Bitcoin also on, on, on company balance sheets and you have uh, an, an experience in, in corporate adoption in Bitcoin, uh, do you have advice for people who have their own companies right now uh, and want to adopt a Bitcoin standard or they are thinking about it, bit, uh, adopting a Bitcoin standard? Do you have any uh, anything that you, uh, as advice for, for those kind of people that like, uh, how can we adopt a Bitcoin standard mm. for, for the company? My advice is just, um, you don't have to start with, uh, with a lot, you know, just with, start with a small stack, try it. And let's say, uh, once in a month, small stake, you can start with a few hundred bucks or a few thousand bucks, depending on the, the size of your company. Um, you don't have to start with a million. And, and, and really anyways, just, and see four years minimum, take that as a, as a minimum length for that, um, and, and see how it performs. And then you will see that, okay, or actually it wasn't that bad idea, but it's, it's, it's a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. That's the thing with Bitcoin. You can't, well, in the end, four years is a sprint, right? <laughs> Every cycle is a sprint. But still, it's a marathon, so you don't, you don't, uh, you don't take the profits out of Bitcoin. That's that's something people should understand as well. You don't you don't take the profits. Bitcoin is the profit, and Bitcoin is the exit. You don't you don't trade your Bitcoin to fiat. But that's exactly something that uh, you need to understand, and it takes time, and it, it it takes a lot of studying. You need to study Bitcoin to understand. That. And that's also my advice to all the all the friends and family and and the people I meet. Study Bitcoin. It's the best investment of your life if you study Bitcoin. Yeah, and it, this this rabbit hole never seems to end. I'm no. uh, my yeah my fourth year seriously in the Bitcoin space now, uh, and I am now interviewing every day a Bitcoiner, and I'm every time learning something new and it's it's, mm -hmm. it's fascinating for me how how deep this uh rabbit hole goes and how different mm -hmm. subjects it, it it touches and how mm -hmm. how great the, the the bitcoiners are which leads me to my next question um before we start into the end routine um i'm fascinating i'm fascinated by bitcoiners uh what what they are doing and what uh personalities they are and that's why i introduced a new question that i asked every guest now what are you currently passionate about or learning deeply about which is not related to bitcoin like or, or besides bitcoin uh, is, is there anything that you are currently looking into it uh, you're doing the activity like whatever it is that you're passionate about besides bitcoin uh, do you have something like that <laughs> that's a that's a good question you know um, I'm, I'm really, um, at the moment, I'm actually quite, quite into the, um, the whole energy topic, you know, I'm not talking about electricity, but energy as, um, as human beings and, and, um, how, how we all are basically one energy. I'm studying that kind of stuff also. So it's, it's quite, quite fascinating, you know, how do you, um, Kind of feel the um, the energy coming from from the other people as well, and then, and you, you sense you sense if it's if it's a good energy or bad energy and, and and all the stuff, and you can also pass on the good energy to others. So that kind of stuff, I'm I'm pretty fascinated about. Kind no, of energy he energy healing stuff. You know? and that's one uh, thing that I noticed with the podcast um, because to most of my guests, I never had contact uh with uh like uh, the only contact i usually have before i record a podcast is the same contact that uh, i have with all the podcast guests is like a small text uh, some of them i call before some of them i already know but 
like 95% of my guests are only texted before. So when you come into the uh, studio and you record with someone, you, you feel even through remotely, even through recording remotely, uh, those different kinds of energy that someone brings. And, yes. and yeah. there, yes. there's this Natalie Brunel uh, energy that I discovered where she is like really very straight and he, she's giving very uh, um, distinguished answers and, and quick and on the point because she's used mm -hmm. to that in the te television. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a whole different energy, for example, to Jeff Booth, who is... Uh, um, very um, calming and 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 makes makes long points and and tries mm -hmm. to think through it, through it and both are amazing speakers but in a mm -hmm. different kind of energy and uh, it's, yes. it's 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 energy is something you can really feel when you are in mm -hmm. in a conversation with someone else especially mm -hmm. su such a focused conversation mm -hmm. uh, uh, as as we have it on the on the podcast because there yes. are there's no music in the background. We're not eating anything. We're not on our mm -hmm. phone. Like there's a really like focused mm -hmm. thing and you can feel the energy a, a lot. Yes. I, I love that a lot. Yes, it's amazing. And, and I think uh, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm jealous to you because you, you have a job in Bitcoin and uh, you, you can do this podcast. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And uh, actually one of my dreams to, to also be more and more now um, within the community to, to even, you know, do something uh, work-wise there as well. That's that's one of my goals because it's it's an amazing community. Bitcoin community is is really really amazing, and the energy there is is, is insanely positive. And, and I'm looking forward to the to the Bitcoin Prague in, in just uh, ten days. So it will really, be awesome. It will yeah, be awesome. Yeah, uh, um, yeah I, I love Bitcoin Prague so much. Uh, I told the story before about this uh, on this podcast. I uh, just made advertisement for Bitcoin Prague without having an, a sponsorship or anything because I liked the conference just so much. And it was one of the reasons why I came into, uh, Bitcoin, uh, with a higher commitment. Like Bitcoin Prague made me level up from, or oh, I have it as an investment to, yes, this, this is the thing I want to do with my life right now. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm really passionate about people going to the Bitcoin Prague conference uh, and for mm -hmm. everyone listening that is now because this will come out uh, uh, later this this week so it will still be before Bitcoin Prague but just a few days before if, if, if you are still in the decision making like ah, should I go to Bitcoin Prague or not and uh, what's, what's the decision uh, there just do it. Like <laughs> if yes, you have yes. the possibilities, just go there mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and level up in the Bitcoin community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you can afford, uh, take the industry pass, take maybe even the VIP pass, uh, learn all those amazing Bitcoiners. Uh, and, but just being there, mm -hmm. even if you, if you don't even have the conference pass, just the expo path, uh, pass, it's really good. And it's, it's really affordable. Uh, the expo pass, uh, it costs, I, I don't know the price, but it was like really, really affordable. Uh, the where you just bucks, yeah, uh, yeah. bucks was the, the the first layer, and then uh, the industry one was around six hundred, five five hundred <laughs> something. Yeah. But but there is even I think a lower one in. Ah uh -huh, yeah the okay so that was uh, yes it's it's for the it's, expo only okay yeah, yeah it's that, it's that uh, the much. Bitcoin Expo uh, only mm -hmm. uh, and it's right. thirty five euros right now ah it's uh, that low. okay it's that low uh, mm -hmm. and with uh, my discount code you get an additional five percent off uh, no additional ten percent off and yep. when you buy it in Bitcoin. You even get additionally five percent off, so it's mm -hmm. probably then thirty euros, or maybe even under. I, I didn't mm -hmm. do the math, so uh, please, <laughs> please don't uh, hate on me if it's a little bit off. But uh, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, a, a worth. And uh, right now, there's this banner almost sold out on on the website. I hope it's not sold out when this airs, uh, but uh, it's 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 a cheap investment to get mm -hmm. to know all the bitcoiners and the expo yes. mm -hmm. if you cannot afford more than that it's it's enough because the conference the the uh, the whole uh, topics you can listen to afterwards 
uh, and on the expo you can meet all those great bitcoiners mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah and, uh, and, and the funny funny detail is this, it's my first bitcoin conference i've never been to any like major bitcoin event i've been i've really been in the closet you know i just came out you know <laughs> Right, just now, this spring. So it's my first uh, bigger Bitcoin event. I've been to smaller <laughs> ones, yes, but uh, not to these big ones. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. And I had a very strong feeling I had to go there. It and was that's... last year also my first one. And it it made me very committed to Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community. And it showed me that it's not just a internet thing it's it's something real it's something where there's mm -hmm. actual industry mm -hmm. when you go through the expo mm -hmm. and you see all those amazing companies in bitcoin then you go uh through the conference stage and you see all those exciting people and and mm -hmm. it's yeah but uh no, no let's not talk too much about bitcoin Prague. i'm already so pumped about it i'm, yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. to meeting everybody there yes. and it will be it will be amazing um perfect and um then let's come to the end routine uh, of our podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And your question uh, for from the last guest is, if you wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin is at 1 million US dollars per coin, mm -hmm. what would you do? A stack more. <laughs> it's the only right answer, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's the only thing that uh, matters. Yeah. Right? Just just stack a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I I've probably would do one thing different. I would uh, probably do a special episode, <laughs> <laughs> but but that that's all I do. Like uh, it, uh, it would not change a lot in my daily life, honestly. Maybe, maybe I, I, I had a lot of a lot of a lot of calls and a lot of WhatsApp <laughs> messages to reply to, but uh, mm -hmm. it it would be a fun day, and uh, I would I'd do the I would do exactly the same as I do uh, any day, uh, just recording and yeah. making Bitcoin content and trying to improve uh, Bitcoin adoption in the long run. Yes. Perfect. And uh, thank you, Swiss Hodler. Thank you, Peter, for for being on. Thank uh, you, Robin. For people that want to reach out to you, ask you questions, where can they find you? On X or Twitter. It's the best way to find me uh, with the Swiss Hodler um, account. There, that's that's the best best uh, channel for 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 having a chat with me on uh, on topics around Bitcoin. Perfect. Then I have your handle and your contact link in the description. So you can just go in there. Uh, there's also all the links from the sponsors, also from uh, Bitcoin Prague. You can check out uh, the links there and see uh, if you have like. Be, be flexible because it, it will come out quite quite close to the Bitcoin Prague. But uh, if you have the chance, come there. Uh, and yeah, for, for everybody uh, uh, watching, thank you. And I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.